On today's show, the Boston Celtics dominated the Phoenix Suns. First in the East, takes down first in the West. We'll talk about that and why there's so much parity in the NBA right now. And then, of course, we'll play our favorite game every week where we count all the most interesting, fun things in the NBA, including an all-time Warriors choke. We'll talk about that coming up on today's Live on NBA. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome. You are locked on to the NBA. My name is Nick Engstead, host of the Locked On Mavericks podcast. Thanks for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. Thank you for uh, making us your first listen. We are available and free on all podcast platforms, including YouTube, where you, the best way you can help us grow the show is to comment below. Give me your two stars of the night, and it can't be a Phoenix Sun. <laughs> Give me your two stars of the night. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. Go check out LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn jobs for the best stuff. LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA. Joining me as always on a Thursday, host of Lockdown Bowls. We're back, baby. What you got for me, Pat the Designer? Welcome back, Spade. Is, uh, is Hayes no longer invited? <laughs> No, he's out. I kicked him out. I kicked Hayes out. One week. That was it. The Lockdown Bulls get to take over Lockdown NBA for one week. That was it. The fear in your heart when you sent that text message out was great. <laughs> said, All right. We're going to try something. <laughs> You're like Billy Donovan, just throwing rotations out there. <laughs> On today's show, we'll talk about the Celtics and the Suns. The Celtics... Like, almost doubled up the Suns, and they did at certain points of the game. An incredible, incredible dominating performance from the Suns. We'll talk about why they've been so good. We'll talk about why there's been so much parity. Jeff Van Gundy says that there's five teams that could win the NBA title. I think it may be more than that, but but also may, I could see it maybe less. We'll talk about we'll that. See we get to that. And then let's get into uh, our favorite game every week, Count It Up, where we count out the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. But the Boston Celtics get the win. I mean, just just a huge win. Yeah, that's one way to say it. <laughs> like huge in maybe stature, but just mostly in the amount of points that they won by. Uh, the final score doesn't even tell you. It's 125 to 98, but at certain points of this game, uh, at the, at halftime, Boston was up by 27. At uh, In the midway through the third quarter, they were up by 45. <laughs> at certain point, they, they were flirting with being up by 50 in this game, and you felt it. You felt every bit of that lead. It just felt like the Boston Celtics from uh, – like midway through or like the end of the first quarter and then all the way through the second quarter and then especially in that third quarter you just felt the Boston Celtics like just put the just put the boot in the neck of the, of the Suns and just never looked back yeah it was a Carl Anthony Towns chokehold on them, on them tonight you know what I mean like it was a it, and it, it was it was just interesting to see right where this Celtics team to me now and we kind of talked about it uh, earlier today, is, is one of the scariest teams in the NBA because, right, like you saw them in the finals last year, and you're like, okay, you know, I, I like what this team is. I think there's some things that they can improve upon. But let me tell you something. Would, would you see Jason Tatum getting better? It's just scary. He was 9 for 19 tonight, 25 points. Defensively, he was engaged. Offensively, he could do no wrong. I, I thought that it, it, him being able to finish around the cup, he's finishing around the basket uh, at a 75% clip this season. That's it's better insane. than Giannis Antetokounmpo, the dude that literally just finishes around the basket. It's all he does. <laughs> so I, for me, right <laughs> I just realized that that drop is. <laughs> I didn't bring that one MVP. up from, from a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. No, I, I, I love what we're seeing from uh from Jason Tatum. And you know what? I think that they finally started to figure out how to play Tatum and Brown off of each other consistently. And I think that's what makes this team the most deadly. It, they figured that out, and then also the tandem of Marcus Smart. Like he was, he always seemed to be this like square peg that they were trying to put in a round hole, and just trying to figure yeah. out, all right, how do we fit this guy that was like a point guard scorer, go to guy in college, and then came in the NBA, and you're like, all right, he's gonna be this role player. Like he has some guard skills, but he's gonna kind of be a Patrick Beverly type player, and then now he's just become and blossomed into their point guard and their playmaker. And in this game, he's got six assists. He only scores four points. Still has a, a huge like impact. Uh, yep. At times in games, as four steals, and 
you're like, okay, well, you're, you can get you can get really good games out of Marcus Smart, and you can get solid games out of him. And then the addition of, of Malcolm Brogdon, I feel like we talk about him every That's week. Yes. 19, 19 minutes, he scores uh, 16 points. He has five assists himself. Like He's been a number one guy on teams before, and now you just bring him in as this ancillary piece. If you have a, like a rotation of Tatum, Brown, Smart, Malcolm Brogdon, Derek White has added some good stuff too. Grant Williams can do some good stuff on the wing. Sam Hauser shot the ball well. Peyton Pritchard has been at least solid at times this season. Like you start adding all these guys together, like that's just such a good rotation. And their bigs are awful. <laughs> like their bigs yeah. are, are not good right now. As far uh, as, let, as let's far, not disrespect the great Luke Cornell. As far as talent wise, like you just <laughs> wouldn't look at that rotation and, and feel like really good about it. Uh, they, they, Al Horford was out of this game because of um, Al, because of health and safety protocols. He he is out. He he's been you know good this year. But yeah. then uh, Robert Williams is supposed to be coming back in like twelve days, few weeks. I think Woj reported during the game that he could be back. And like that yeah. that's the scariest thing about this whole team is that they don't even really have a good big rotation. Imagine if you know Blake Griffin's giving up some decent stuff. Luke Cornett's giving up some decent stuff. And then they then they get Robert Williams and Al Horford back. Like this team is going to be just like on another level. I I think I think the thing with that is right. You can only count on what you want, what you know is going to be there. I love Robert Williams. I think Time Lord comes out and he he is right, like a difference maker on this team. But it, it's very similar to me. Like what what I'm going through is, is doing Bulls with Lonzo Ball. I can't count on what more times than not hasn't been there for me. When it is there, it's amazing. And I think the, I think the Celtics have kind of gone with that approach, right? You want Time Lord to be out there. You want him because of the addition he makes, how great he is rebounding, how many shots he changes. But there's so many times in a season where you look around and you're like, he's not here and we still have to win these games. Um, so for me, right, like, I think that the, the part that you mentioned, Malcolm Brogdon, that's the biggest addition. Yeah. Consistency, right? You you had Tatum, you had Brown. Smart's not really consistent when it comes to the offensive side of the ball. He'll give you a four-point day. He'll give you an 18-point day. You needed that third person that either on one side or the other, offensively or defensively, was going to be out there game in and game out consistently. And so far this season, that's proven to be Malcolm Brogdon. I think that he is a, you know, he's like a 90s basketball addition. And what I mean by that is like, remember in the 90s where like somebody would just be like, hey, I scored 25 points a game on this team and I'm a star. And then like, they'd be like, but I am a free agent and the bulls want me. So I'm gonna go play with Michael Jordan. And now I average like 12. Like that's what Malcolm Brogdon is to this team. Like Malcolm Brogdon comes in, he'll have games where he gives you 13. He'll have games where he gives you 25, but he's just consistently there. And I think that's the biggest thing for this Celtics team. Well, it's like when Mark Aguirre went and joined the Pistons. Yes, dog. Like uh, Mark Aguirre to the Pistons, Ron Harper to the Bulls, right? Like you look at those guys before that and you're like, wow. Hey, you were a really good basketball player. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I was. I was. But also championships. championships. <laughs> yeah. And then Mark Aguirre went and won two championships with the Pistons. So, you know yeah, I mean? it, it is like that. Or it's like Kevin Durant joining the, <laughs> joining the Warriors. Well, it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't it's take a little it. different. I, don't a little different. I wouldn't I'm go that far. I'll take it that far. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, quickly on the Suns, uh, they had a, they had a bad loss against the Mavs the other day, and now they have this bad loss. Chris Paul just came back, and he returned to this game. The thing about the Suns, they're still missing Cam Cam uh, Johnson. Jay Crowder's obviously still been out for them. Like they're kind of one of those teams. It's always been like better than the sum of their parts. At yeah. time, like when they're together, they can they, they can be better. And so when they are missing something, I just felt it really felt like they were missing one key guy to hit some threes. And Cam Johnson has been that guy for them uh, this season, and they really it seemed like they missed him early on. And then we've seen this team, like even in the playoffs, when you talk about Game Seven against the Mavs, all the games against the Mavs were either a, were a blowout one way or the other. Like this team either blows you out or they just or they like get blown out. It just seems like that's the way that this team has been. Uh, yeah. and, and last year they had more blowouts than they got blown out. So sunburns, baby. Uh, That's no, I, I think I think the uh, the I can't believe I'm actually going to say this as somebody that watched him miss basically every pregame shot that he taped he took. Um, taking Cameron Payne out of the starting lineup and replacing him with Chris <laughs> Paul has caused him to take a little bit of a step back. I'm not saying it's going to be something long term. But you took a guy that was willing to take eight to ten shots a game and was knocking him down at a nice clip to Chris Paul, who's kind of just slowly working himself back in. Yeah, I mean, tonight he took six shots. 
in 24 minutes. You know, that's going to set you back a little bit. I, I don't think that it's a long-term thing. I think you played against a couple of teams that can get after you. Oh, by the way, like the, the Mavs is an anomaly just because that's just beef. Like that's that's beef. Yeah, that's that, like, that's what rivalry stuff. You know what now. I mean? You throw like out the record books almost. Hey, you like I feel like like you could take everybody off of that team except Luca and Devin Booker, and it'd be like this is one of the best games of the year. They hate each <laughs> other. They legitimately hate each other. <laughs> I think the Suns would win that game by a lot. <laughs> wow, well, you, you don't have to take too much off of the Mavs to get there anyway. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, but, but what it does is like when Chris Paul was out and it, campaign was up, then it just becomes like the team's not deep enough to replace a loss like true. that at, at this point. Right. That they, no, true. They don't have the depth like that. They're already starting Torrey Craig and Deandre Ayton. Like he had been playing awesome recently and now he yeah. just kind of goes back to, all right, seven, let, let me just take seven shots. And that's kind of it. And he should have dominated this game. Like it seemed like early on, they were really going to him in this game. And he did, couldn't take advantage of the advantage that he had with Blake yep. Griffin out there or Luke Cornett. And the Celtics swarming defense also gives them, you know, gives them a, a buffer against a guy like Aiden, too, because it felt like he was turning the ball over early in this game. He had four, yeah, he had four turnovers in this game. It felt like he was turning the ball over every time Tatum or Brown or Smart or somebody would come over and just strip the ball away from him. Um, I think, too, we have to take it into account. This game was over so quick. So fast, yeah. All this that literally, it's game. just like. We're not coming back from this. <laughs> it honestly felt like Game Seven against the, like Mavs, Mavs Suns. It was that you ever have you seen that meme where it's like Chris Paul hits a huge three to cut it to forty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, what felt, that's what it felt like times in this game. Coming up, let's get into why the league feels like it's so wide open. Um, the Pelicans are the number one team in the West right now. Remember when I was crazy? Talk about that and more coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the place where you can post your jobs. You can post jobs for free on LinkedIn. When you own a small business, it feels like every single person that you hire is high stakes. It is, all right, if I don't get this right, we're going to get beat by 40 points like the, like the Suns did tonight. You can go check out LinkedIn Jobs. They help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Go check it out. Add the purple uh, hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NBA. That's linkedin.com slash NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Pat. It was a wild night in the NBA. Actually, there's some some crazy scores. We'll talk about the uh, the Jazz um, Warriors game later. We'll play David Locke's uh, call on the on the final. We have to play it on Locked On NBA. We have to play his call, and we'll talk about how big of a choke job it was for the Warriors. Um, the Magic beat the Clippers in overtime. Another wild game. Uh, the Nets are all of a sudden back to fourth in the NBA in the standings after a win against the Hornets. The Knicks dominated the Hawks. Um, you have uh, every other game felt like it was pretty, uh, pretty set by standings. But now all of a sudden, you look at the standings across the NBA, and there's just parity. The Suns are the Suns were number one. Now they're number two. The Pelicans are number one. The difference between number one in the West and number eleven. So from number one in the, in the whole conference to maybe I guess winning that trophy that they're going to, they're going to give out of the best team in the NBA to yeah. being out of the play in is four games. That's, that's it. Four games. You can go on a real good, like eight game stretch and go from where the Timberwolves are 12 and 12 to all the way to the top of the West right now. It yeah. is, there's so much parody right now the, the East is a little bit more bunched up, um, but it's still, there's only a one game difference between um, ninth place and fifth place it's like there, there's still a lot of movement that can happen what what do you think is the big biggest reason why there's so much parity right now I, I think we're coming into a time that we're watching the greatest time in the nba Ooh. and i know right like, for the for the old heads right like that's going to be a tough take but there was such it, it's the reason that i've talked about right like we need to kind of upgrade our standards for the superstars is the reason i've talked about why we need to upgrade our qualifications for the hall of fame there's not a team in this NBA that you don't look at and you say that guy can't average 25. There's not a team in this NBA that you look maybe okay maybe maybe Charlotte. There's just cuz uh, Little Mello, come on. Little Mello. Well, if he needed to, but yeah, I guess okay, the I'll answer, give you the that. The answer is the Spurs, by the way. Yeah, 
Well, uh, Kelvin, yes, okay. Kelvin Johnson. I, maybe. I, I don't, he he could, but they're like relax. <laughs> but I, there's there's a player on every team in the NBA. This is David Stern's dream. Yeah. Every team has a star. Every market is entertaining. Every right, like of course, right. Like if your team's six and twenty right now, you're not feeling good about where your team is at. But you've got Paolo Bancaro. <laughs> but you've got Paolo Bancaro. Like that's what I'm saying. And so, right, like I think now we're seeing that play out in the standings. It's becoming a a, a time in the NBA where you can't go into every night like you just talked about. The Clippers got beat by the Magic. You yeah. can't go into any night in this league and say guaranteed dub. And I think, right, like that is the best thing about this league right now. That's the best thing that we're seeing. And it, it's so entertaining. Is it frustrating? Heck yeah, because I'm trying to figure out why the Bulls are losing to the dog on Magic. And then you like, they go out and beat the Clippers and you're like, I don't feel as bad anymore. You know what I mean? Like, so it, it's, it's one of those, it, it's one of those things where it's frustrating because of how competitive it is, but it makes for such a better league. We also have spread out stars, right? Like there's that co that comment early in the season. Was it? I think Luca made it, and I think somebody else made it that Tatum and Brown are the best duo in the league. That doesn't feel like like a number one duo in the league, right? Think about all the great duos we've seen, like the yeah. LeBron and Wade, the Curry and Durant, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaq and Kobe, right? The like you know guys like that. Like you think about that as the top duos in in the NBA, like it's two All NBA like first team type players that are together. And we just don't have that anymore, right? Like Harden and Embiid should be like one of the top duos, but Harden has fallen off. Uh, right. Kyrie and Durant should be one of the top ones, and, and Kyrie is not necessarily where he's been in the past. Although he had a good, he's had a good stretch now. Um, you look at like Booker and Chris Paul, like that's not as good of a duo. Luca has nobody. Like he just like the, 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 so uh, Jokic and Murray. Like Murray's injury stuff has has made him fall off here, and so you're like. There's just not as many bunched up stars anymore. And I think some of the things have worked with the, all right, we'll give them the super max team. Yeah. Like players will stay on their teams for longer. Um, and then you look at Giannis, he resigns and stays in Milwaukee. That was one of the ones that could have shifted all of this yeah. a couple years ago. I know that a lot of Mavs fans were waiting on Giannis to, I got to get out of here. I can't win in Milwaukee. I'm going to go team up with Luca. They got max contract space. Like we were, we were all waiting for that to happen and that to be the next big duo that just took the league by storm. And it never happened because Giannis was loyal and Giannis stayed and then they won a title. And now you're like looking at all the rest of the best players in the NBA. And a lot of them are, are European too. Like we haven't been down this route many times before seeing how these players will think about free agency and think about moving. Yeah. Dirk stayed forever. Giannis now looks like he's going to stay forever. Uh, you, Luka and Jokic, we're going to see what they decide to do over the next couple of years and see if they decide to um, team up. But the team-ups that we've seen in the past have been guys that have played on Team USA together or guys that have yep. you know uh, played in like AAU teams together or things like yep. that. Uh, and like you said, there's just so much spread out talent in the league right now that you know a team-up of – D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns, when they were friends like in the AAU and they team up, like doesn't hit as hard as <laughs> sometimes yeah. like, like some of the ones that hit before. No, 100%. And I think it's just also, right, like you have so much. It's like you said, there's so much talent coming from everywhere. Remember, 20 years ago, 20, where are we at? 20, 20 I years mean, ago. Maybe 2002. 20 years ago, like people were still scared to draft foreign players. Because there was this stigma that they can't play ball the way we can play ball. Well, and then Darko got drafted the next year. <laughs> I mean, you know, 2003. Yeah, it makes it a little tougher. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then Bagnani like three years later. Yeah, 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 it makes it a little tougher. Right? <laughs> Maybe they weren't wrong. But the 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 overseas game Jan is 110% kind of <laughs> caught up to the American game. Maybe not 100 Maybe not all the way right. Like, I think you're, you're best. Look at Eurobasket this summer. I mean, yeah, like I, I think I I think it, the thing for me, right, like you're your best of the best, right? Like the guys that I look at and I'm like, it's still for me, like Kevin Durant, LeBron James, those guys, right? Anthony Davis. I, I think you still have some American born players that are still at the top. But I mean, like Tatum. it's not a large gap. Luka Doncic is doing things that LeBron James is doing in year four, in year two, year three. You know what I mean? Like he, he came into the NBA like, oh, yeah, I can average 20. It's actually a little bit easier over here. So, like, there's so much parity. There's so many places to go get talent. There's so many places to find guys now that can come in and can average 20 off of the bat. And on top of that, 
the NBA is making it a little easier for you to average 20 based on how they're calling and officiating some of these games. And just how skilled players are, right? Like, how many best players in the NBA do we have right now? It's probably Giannis is probably the number one. But don't we have, like, five best players in the NBA? Luka can make a case. Jokic can make a case. Luka. Tatum can make a case. Giannis can make a case. KD it, can make a case. You really now it, – it's really now a case of everybody can have a favorite player that does the thing they love, right? Giannis is the old-school dominant player. Um, Luca is the guy that can do everything. He's he's the modern day LeBron James, right? Jokic is modern day Hakeem Olajuwon. I can pass it. What do you need? You need twenty assists tonight. Well, he's he's our Vita Sabonis if it had worked out. The Sabonis, if he, you know what I mean? Like I can do whatever you need me to do. There's so many options, and I, I listen. We're in the best time in the NBA. I know there's a lot. Like the the Jordan years will always be great for me. But it was so clear to see that it was Jordan yeah, and then everybody else. Yeah, there's not a LeBron, a Kobe. There's not one of those to, to top the NBA at the moment. No. And and for you to find that play, do you realize what that player would have to look like? To just be like, oh, my God, he's the greatest player yeah. look, we're going to see to, of all time. To think about that, look at what Giannis is doing right now. Add a three point shot. He would have to be better than that, right? Like, he, he <laughs> you would know have what to I mean? be, like, we're not convinced with what Giannis is doing, with what Luka is doing, what Jokic has done. We're not convinced that's the best player in the NBA, right? Like, that's how spread out and wild the talent is so far. So, the pair Giannis mixed with Kevin Durant it's, with Zion Williamson's weight. Oh, I was going to say, he's coming down the pipeline right now and he's Victor Wembanyama, but he doesn't have the weight. He doesn't Relax. have Zion's Relax. weight. At, at <laughs> So uh, the Spurs are hoping. Parody's been great in the NBA. Let us know in the comment section on YouTube. Do you like how the like, do you feel like this is the best time in the NBA right now, or do you think that uh, you don't like the parody and you wish that there were some top teams that people could take down or teams could take down? Do you like it when it was the the Heatles team or the Warriors team or the Lakers at the top or whoever? Uh, coming up, count it up. Let's count out the most interesting, fun things in the NBA, including the Warriors choke job. Uh, the Spurs are asking multiple first round picks for Jakob Pertle and. Um, we're snitching on some travels. Should they call more of them? Let's talk about that coming up. All right, Pat. Let's play our favorite game every single week. Count it up. Count it up. Count it up. Count it. Where we count all the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. The Golden State Warriors didn't play Curry, didn't play Draymond, didn't play Wiggins. But Clay was playing. Poole was playing. Looney was playing. Like their guys, some of their guys are still playing. Larry Markkinen out for the Jazz. Mike Conley out for the Jazz. The Jazz are up by 11 in the beginning of the fourth quarter. The Warriors work it all the way back, and they get a four-point lead with 13 seconds left to go. And then all of a sudden, Clay Thompson leaves Michael like Michael Beasley <laughs> leaves Malik Beasley open on the wing, completely wide open as he comes down into the paint and tries to check somebody. Beasley hits a three. Utah's down one. Six seconds left to go. This is what happened. Bounce pass in the pool. It's knocked away. It's stolen. Jazz have it. Beasley to Fontecchio. Jazz Graham in the lead. 124, 123. Jerome baseball outlet. Tipped. Loose. Jazz win. Holy smoke. What just happened? An unfathomable finish. The ball tipped by Poole. Picked up by Beasley. Give it to Fontecchio for the dog. What just happened? <laughs> it's so good. There's some extra sounds in there. That's courtesy of uh, the Utah Jazz social media. And uh, and obviously, the, the founder, the grand poobah, the host of Locked on Jazz, David Locke, on the call there for the Utah Jazz radio. Um, the Jazz get the win. Put the inbound the Warriors inbound the ball to pool and Nikhil Alexander Walker slaps it away from him. They steal it. They throw it out to uh, uh, Simone Fontecchio, and he dunks it. That's his 18th points of the game. Some people don't even know who that is. I had to look up the pronunciation of his name. Um, on a scale of zero to up three one, how bad of a choke job was that? Count it up. Uh, that was a uh, second mention on the show. That was a Carl Anthony Towns choke out. <laughs> that was a uh, that was a Reggie Miller to Spike Lee choke job oh. right there. That was a uh, I can't think of any more good ones in the NBA where somebody threw the choke symbol up or or choked somebody out. So, Didn't Trey uh, Young do it to the to the Knicks? 
He did do it to the Knicks. I don't know if it was that. Did he do that or did he do the shit? I can't remember. We'll talk about celebra- know, We'll talk about celebrations later. That's the tough one. But no, um, this no, is it, bad. It, it's here's the thing. Up yes, four it, with thirteen seconds to go. Bad, bad, right? Bad. At the end of the day, a lot of people miss. Like I know it's like, hey, you should have won this game. A lot of people missing, but in the in the retrospect of tonight, if we're talking about how you lost the game. This is probably one of the biggest chokes. And this will be one of those ones, right? Like, these are the games that that uh, fans remember forever, right? Like, yeah. these are the games where it's like, you're not supposed to win it. Like, for me, it's like Nate Robinson uh, beating the Nets in the playoffs. It's like, <laughs> what? how did we just do that? I don't know. We did it, though. You know, like, those are the ones that you love. Oh, the, the Mavs over the Suns, the J.J. Barea starts in the finals and beats the, yeah. beats the Heat, like... Um, according to um, according to a report in San Antonio, multiple sources say that the San Antonio Spurs are open for business on the trade market. The asking price for Jakob Pertl, their starting center, continues to be a pair of first round picks with limited protections. Um, Count it up. How many first round picks is that too many for Jakob Pertl? And who should actually give up a pick or maybe two for Jakob Pertl right now? I mean, it's... <sighs> First round picks go a long way. I mean, so like if it's a end of the first round, I'll give you that. Multiple first round picks for Yaku. That's, that's a lot. But that's that's a little steep, bro. Like, like now here's the thing: is this a Lakers situation, right? Am I giving you like 2027 and 2029? Like, for is that teams, what this is for the teams that need somebody like that? It, it probably is, right? I mean, l- l- he's a, he's a put you over the top piece, right? Like he's that he's that you know who I first off. First team that should be calling the Boston. Celtics. I was going to say, I just looked up if they have their picks. <laughs> they owe a pick to Indiana this year. Then they have their own pick in 24, 25, 26, 27. So they could give up one first round pick. They actually own, they actually are giving a pick to San Antonio in 2028. That's for the Derek white deal. So mm-hmm. maybe they could work that out and then give them another pick like, and get Yako Pertle and make them even better than they are right now. I mean, that would shore up their big band rotation. If they're worried about, uh, Robert Williams coming back. That one's a, that's a really good old? one. Oh my god! Yeah, no. First off, give him the two. Give him, he's twenty seven. <laughs> yeah, he's he's also he's a free. He's, he's, I think he's gonna be a free agent too, right? Uh, I do believe he's gonna be a free agent after yeah, this year. Yeah, he's an expiring contract. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. not giving up two first round picks for an expiring contract. Sorry. I mean, do you, do you think you can resign? I think that's what it is too, as well, right? Like that, that's the conversation. Yeah. We want to get you in here. We want a contract done immediately. Excuse me, excuse me. That's tampering, Pat, the designer. Uh, um, <laughs> says, <laughs> not our tourist Carter show. <laughs> the, um, the second round picks. In the if mix. I'm the Mavs, I think about this for sure. I know they can't give up first round picks really, but I would think about that. They definitely need somebody like that. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of teams in the NBA. Yeah, I'm not a, is, uh, is this a Nets? Is this a net situation? You're not a big believer in uh, in Christian Wood up there. By the way, you're not a, uh, not the, a the, the head coach is not a big believer. Yeah, that is a fact. <laughs> that it is doesn't is matter how fact. much I believe in him. The head coach is not believing. <laughs> that um, is a fact. Devin in the lab on Twitter has been calling himself the quote number one social media snitch ref. <laughs> <laughs> dropping compilations of egregious travels and carries and violations that weren't called. He dropped one on John Morant. He dropped one on Luca. I think he's on a couple others. Um, the Mavs and Warriors played a game last week where 10 travels were called in the game, including one on Curry late that helped the Mavs get the win. Count it up. Should refs be calling these more? And should they rein in the violations? Should we be upping it? Should we be upping the ante on uh, or the uh, the mandate here on travels and carries and things like that? So here's my thing. Yes and no, right? I know that sounds like a cop out answer, but it for me, very yes, much does. You, you you have to. I mean, listen. I I am not. I I haven't been in my life a college basketball fan as much. But what I will say is, college basketball calls rules by the way it's written. Like, hey, no, that's a travel because you can't take more than two steps based on the rule book, right? Like you just, just insert rule book. In Those there. Listening you know what audio, I mean? You missed a very nice, like, yeah. <laughs> gesturing lot, towards the rule book. Rules. Like it's so it's, 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 <laughs> it's one of those things for me, right? Where yes, you should call it based on the rule, but at the same time, you've allowed these teams to have 15, 20 games of this already. You've allowed these teams to have uh training camps where you probably didn't send out memos saying that you were going to be clamping down on these things. Uh, you've allowed these teams to go through preseason, all of that, right? Like they're ready in the season. It would be a drastic shift to all of a sudden go to that 
during the season this year, very much so like it was in the playoffs last year where they were like, hey, it's okay for you to not call aggressive fouls sometimes like it's the 1990s again. And teams weren't able to adjust to that because they hadn't played that way the entire year. So they already are upping the mandate on travels. There's already been more travels this season called like on average yeah. than, than in past years. So they're already doing this. The thing that I, I the thing that I don't agree with with when I watch those Devin in the lab videos, a lot of them are like off of an inbounds pass or like top of the key. Like he's getting ready to load like John Rant's getting ready to load up and drive into the lane. It doesn't necessarily give them a huge advantage. It's not like they're in traffic and like if they do this move, it's going to completely give them an advantage over the other team. It's like weird stuff where if you called it, you'd be like, "Ugh, well, it's just stopping the game again and giving the ball to the other team. There's not really an advantage. I'm all for calling things by the rules if it's giving an advantage. But if it's just to stop the game because a guy misdribbled a little bit like out in space, like, I'm fine with them. Le- I'm fine with them letting it fly and letting them just letting it slide a couple times. I think the thing is, right, like, it, it. think about, right, like, in, in my mind, John Morant, one of the best ball handlers in the NBA, and you give him an extra step and a half. Like, that. that's when he, kind when, of... When he gets the inbound, right? Or, like, know, at, the, at the very beginning of a drive when he's, like, way out in space, like, before it even matters. But even that, right, like, it, it changes, like, it uh, on a lot of the one where he's, like, carry, right? It changes the move that John Moran can do because he has the ball more secure. Okay, but what about, what about the one coming. where, okay, this, this was a lot of them, right, where he's, they're backing, they're backing somebody down. They're doing the Kobe, like, I'm going to post you up from, like, the elbow. And he carries right there. That doesn't do anything, right? Like, does, well, does that do, that, that doesn't really give you any advantage right then unless you're going to go off the dribble right on that, right yeah. on that carry, right? Which usually, I mean, I. Sometimes I think, it, it happens, but like you're going off of that carry right there. I, I wouldn't call that because it's just it's not giving him an advantage. It's just a lazy dribble. I, I think the thing, but even that, right? Like that that's what it goes to. And and the one thing that I'll say, especially since I live call all the Bulls games and stuff like that, is that the the part, like the fundamental part of the game has definitely slowly gone away. I get what he's trying to do, right? He's trying to say, like, we'll call him out. Let's get back to fundamentals. Let's get back to learning how to play ball. I wouldn't call I listen, Michael Jordan got away with a lot of stuff. Oh, Kobe yeah. Bryant, let, Kobe Bryant let, literally said his, his point is let's get back to playing rules. Like, let's get back to calling rules. Like, it's not yeah, about yeah, yeah. playing the basketball necessarily. It's just well, about, I let's mean, going back to letter the of the law. But here's the thing: if I take away your your ability to take an extra half a step or your ability to take a step, you have no choice but to go back to your fundamentals and say, I have to dial this down now. They're still calling travels more, right? They're calling them in in spots when it matters. They're just not calling them out when it's, you know, it's just lazy dribbles off inbounds and weird post-ups and stuff like that. Even some of those are iffy, though. Like, even some of those, you know what I mean? Oh, there's definite ones they miss, for sure. The game's also faster than ever. It's probably harder to call those. I think I think the biggest thing at the end of the day is if you're going to call it, just be con- all I ask is consistency. Don't have certain referee crews that focus on it and certain that don't, right? Because Tony Brothers, you know what I mean? Like honestly, bro. Because literally, the call on Stephen Curry. Guess what? Yeah, we played him the next night. He did the same thing. Not one call. <laughs> I was looking. I was like, that that cost him a game. Yeah. Like I, li- I, it, I was from the other team standpoint, but I was like, that cost him a game, and you're not consistent with that call. It can't be, oh, this crew is focusing on this call, this crew is focusing on, on that call. Like I, I'll give you that with charges and and different things like that. It can't be that for Trap. No. Last one. There's a Reddit post this week that went viral that the Lakers are zero and seven, zero wins, seven losses. When, anytime Russell Westbrook does the rock the baby. Does the rock the baby celebration where you put your two hands together like you're holding the baby and you'd rock it back and forth. Count it up. What are the dumbest celebrations that are currently happening in the NBA right now? I'll give you one. The too small. We've gone too far with it. We've gone too far with the too small. It's been used on tall people. Christian Wood did the too small against Jock Landell the other day, and I'm like, hold on. Wait, Jock Landell's like seven feet tall. You can't do too small on a guy that's bigger than you. I, I think we've we've turned too small into everything. It's too yeah. It can't be it, too small. Can't be weight it, as well. Okay. Too small is a height thing. Luca is is guarded by Patrick Beverly and and hit and like <laughs> that's too small, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I I think the the one I saw it tonight, and it may, I don't know if this is making its way around. I've seen it a couple of times, but is to, Taj Gibson knocked down a three. Yes, Taj Gibson still in the NBA. Taj Gibson knocked down a three. And did like the one, two, three 
phone to the ear. What does that mean? <laughs> Maxi Kleba does the phone call. He doesn't t- he doesn't type numbers, but he do- he does the phone call after every what does three that mean? he makes. What does that mean? I, Who he, are you calling? He's he like, always says you know, and I'm like I don't know. <laughs> I wish. I, <laughs> <laughs> I always like to I always like to think it's, it's I always like to think it's to a loved one or somebody. Uh, <laughs> You know what's a, a, a dumb... That's someone on the phone? That's what you're going with there? That's, that's where you took that? It's, it's not a, it's a ham. It's a hand radio. It's a ham radio. Oh, no, mom. <laughs> hey, Mom, I, I just uh, knocked out another three-pointer. The shimmy? Are we doing the shimmy too much? I don't know anybody else outside of... Uh... Curry and Ja. Luca tried to shimmy the other day, and uh, it's it's. I saw that it one. Was, That's let, not good. Let's just say it was rhythmically as good as you would expect. <laughs> that that was not the. Sh- that was a Mike Gusecki, uh, uh gritty right there. That's what that looked uh, like. No, the, I don't think the shimmy's overdone. What about the shushing the crowd? Luca did it at home the other day, and I was like, hold on. He's like, I don't know why I did it. It was dumb, but it's just immediately his reaction. I did it. see that too. Um, the shushing at home will always be dumb um the shushing on the road i'm in favor of only here's the thing though only if the crowd is really giving it to you though like yes. some people are doing this shush and it's like yeah, luca did it at home it's like it's like it's no respectable you know what i mean like uh, no we respect your oh, game like, okay if you do it to the bench if the opposing team's bench right like it's got to be in the right context it's got to be in the right direction you gotta um, use it in the right direction trey young's uh trey young's like i'm cold or ice oh, cold, ice tray, like, ice tray. What are we doing here, brother? Um, the Jordan shrug. We got to retire it, right? Like nobody should be able to do the Jordan shrug. <laughs> that that one. Here's <laughs> wild part. I was gonna say I'll that just one, sit back for you. That right one. There. That one irritates me, but it only irritates me because people just do it in moments that don't that aren't amazing. <laughs> like it's just like it's like, like Michael this, Irvin's first down dance. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like, it's not that this wasn't that amazing, bro. Like, why, why are we doing the Jordan shrug here? I don't know, bro. That that one was the that one. Uh, and then also now it reminds me every time like Jordan hit six threes. I just not that impressive. Anymore. <laughs> um, you know, you know what's one that I miss that guys got fined for? You remember when guys used to do the big balls dance? <laughs> yes, Marco <laughs> Bellinelli. <laughs> I remember. Julius, I like my meatballs spicy. I like. I remember when Julius Randle got fined for that when he was on the Lakers. Yeah, Bellinelli did too. He he, <laughs> he he did like a tip in pass to Joakim Noah, and Joakim got the lay, and he's like running down the court. <laughs> it's like, it like ah, I know what he's doing. <laughs> Oh, man. There you go. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. What are your two stars of the night? Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us on Lockdown NBA. Go follow Lockdown Sports today. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, the take of the day. I think Lockdown Clippers is going to be on there today. Available on Odyssey, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown NBA. Bye-bye. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>